Our dreams often never make sense from an outside perspective. Bizarre settings, illogical situations, familiar yet foreign characters are often what we see. But by morning, we forget most of them and continue on with our lives. But when you're in a dream, you believe it, completely immersed in this fantastical world you created in your head. And sometimes, you don't ever want to wake up. But dreams aren't always perfect. They are reflections of our reality. and can sometimes reveal a lot about ourselves and the world around us. Which brings me to the king and the mockingbird. The kingdom of Tachycardia is ruled by a terrible king. Nobody likes him, but everyone is too afraid to speak up. He's surrounded by yes-men and constant praises. Even just the slightest poke to his fragile ego is enough to set him off and get executed. The only person man enough to mock and ridicule the king is a bird, because he can just fly away without getting killed. However, the king is alone. He lives isolated in a secret apartment at the very top of the kingdom. No one is allowed inside, even the servants who accompany him on the way there are immediately killed upon entering. No friends, no family, he truly is lonely at the top. Despite this, he still dreams of a simple life with the beautiful shepherdess, whose painting he keeps on his wall, next to the one of the chimney sweeper, which he despises. You don't really have to keep that painting if you didn't want to, man. Just saying. One night, as the king is sleeping, the paintings and artworks in his apartment come to life, and after a fight breaks out, the shepherdess escapes with the chimney sweeper, and the king is killed and replaced by his painting doppelganger. Now, other than what I just said, this movie's plot is very basic. It's a Romeo and Juliet love story, forbidden love, arranged marriage. You've seen this a thousand times. But what makes this movie stand out to me is its messages and themes, and how they are presented. If it wasn't obvious, this movie is very surreal. Just look at the king's name. You don't have to be good at maths to realize that those numbers don't add up. But more importantly, look at Tachycardia. It is massive, but completely illogical. There are staircases that lead nowhere, entrances in front of huge drops, and a wide range of architecture styles, which makes it hard to pinpoint what time period this story is supposedly taking place in. But somehow, the nonsense still feels strangely logical. At the beginning of the film, the king takes an elevator to get to his apartment. As he's ascending, there's an announcer that presents each floor and section of the kingdom, and by doing so, we the audience start to develop a sense of structure to the chaos. As we explore the kingdom throughout the movie, we start to understand that tachycardia is structured by hierarchy. The wealthy live a noble lifestyle at the top, whereas the poor and less fortunate live imprisoned at the bottom. It's like watching a dream, illogical but somehow completely logical. The fact that it's animated really helps to cement this feeling and fully immerse us into this fantastical world, which is brought to life by the film's almost whimsical score. As you're probably starting to gather, the strange and bizarre elements of this film aren't just for show either. They mean something. Let me ask you, have you ever felt imprisoned, like you lived your whole life in a cage? We often think that by accumulating wealth and becoming more powerful in a societal standpoint, we can break out of our cage and become free. But this isn't entirely true. As much as we might think that we're free, this freedom exists solely within the confines of our society. As the film shows us, this cage can take many forms. Obviously, those living at the bottom of the kingdom are oppressed. They live in a literal cage and aren't allowed to leave. The king even builds a big fuck-off robot just to mess with them. But those at the top, the king especially, although living a very comfortable and lavish lifestyle, are incredibly lonely. They're surrounded by fake friends, insincere compliments, and empty praises. The more you look at it, the more you realize that tachycardia is just this huge cage, oppressing and trapping people in all aspects. Take for example, this montage of the main characters working at a factory. Some might think that working a job might be liberating in its own way. The king even says this himself. But as we watch this exaggerated and satirized montage of hard labor, we begin to see how this too can be its own form of oppression. 
The soundtrack perfectly encapsulates the feeling of this never-ending, rhythmic, soul-crushing, mindless work. Everything is so structured and organized, it feels that you have no time to breathe, like you're drowning in this constant industrial noise that can, over time, really put a mental toll on you. But you can't stop. The system doesn't wait for you, and God forbid you try to fight back. Because the moment our protagonists do, boom, they're instantly punished and thrown in jail. Yet again, another cage. The motif of cages is present throughout the entire film, really cementing this idea of freedom and oppression within society. But all of this really comes together in the ending scene. After the king's robot is hijacked by the protagonists, the entire kingdom gets wrecked and destroyed. The characters have long since escaped, and all that's left is this huge mountain of rubble with the robot sitting on top of it. He sits as if he's pondering over what he's done. Perhaps he's regretful, shameful, or simply just sad. Has the destruction he caused fulfilled him any more in life? He lashed out at the very society that brought him into the world. He's now what's left of it. I guess all he can think about now is, was it worth it? We then cut to a little bird trapped in a cage. Throughout the whole movie, this same bird has gotten trapped in this same cage multiple times. It seems that no matter how many times it breaks free, it always manages to get trapped again, never truly being free. It calls for help, desperately trying to escape and fly away without success. All of a sudden, the robot, seemingly on his own, moves his hand. opens the cage. He then raises his hand, curls his fist, and... Freedom.